Međunarodna ljubav u doba korone može da izgleda i tako što je, na primer, paru iz Belarusije i Španije jedina mogućnost ovih meseci da se sretnu Srbija. O tome u narednih 15 minuta, ali i o zemlji koja je možda ne jedina, ali jedna od redkih u svetu sigurno gde je korona, iako je pandemija, nije glavna tema, razgovaramo sa 30-godišnjom beloruskinjom Anastasijom. Nastja, welcome. This is your second time in Serbia, your first time in Niš. Yes. That, Why that's Serbia? Right. I said mm -hmm. you didn't understand that it was in Serbian, mm -hmm. that uh, the only chance for you to meet uh, was Serbia. Why Serbia? Serbia, this is the best uh, option for me uh, because uh, we have direct flights from Minsk. I don't need visa. Um, so um, I just bought a ticket and can come, come, can come here and... Uh, what are your other options? What were your other options? Uh, it could be like Turkey or Egypt, something like this. Um, and I think that's it mostly. For you, what is Serbia for you nowadays? Um, f like I visited uh, Serbia only as a tourist. So for me now, it's, this is a, a place, uh, opportunity to, to meet with my friend. For me, it's like unknown country, uh, but uh, I started to explore it. And um, like, I like a lot of things. Uh, I mean, architecture and people are very nice. Uh, but I really don't know much. You're coming from a country. You said that it, it is similar situation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to COVID, COVID yeah. but uh, in your country it was pandemia, but you didn't have uh, any measures in Belarus. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. what, what was the situation like? Officially we, we had uh, COVID, but with uh, uh, little numbers of uh, people who had it. Like Officially we had much less cases of COVID, but in fact uh, when you speak with people, you understand that someone had parents, parents have COVID, friends have COVID, you have COVID, for example. And um, all from government, there, there wasn't um, supporting no by medical staff, not, not by economical help into business. Uh, they did something, but it, it was really uh, little and not very useful and people understood that uh, they like to survive they should uh, do something themselves organize themselves organize them yeah. themselves so yeah mm, big big uh, helping was from volunteer volunteering mm, people it was usual people they just decided okay we should we should uh, find solution to help uh, medics because they were living in hospital, almost living in hospital to help people. And um, there are not enough masks, there were not enough uh, technical uh, things for breathing and uh, all, all um, these things appeared uh, only because of uh, organization of society or only because of uh, people that donated, that made log logistic and uh, other different things. Yeah, we, this is the ninth month of uh, pandemia, mm -hmm. and as I understood, uh, masks are mandatory just now. They weren't mandatory before. Yeah. Do people wear masks? I see you wearing it here. Mm -hmm. Do you wear it in Belarus? I wear, but not many people use it. Uh, so there is no any mandatory. It it uh, only responsibility of um, each person. If they want, they use it. If not. So in the bus it could be three person or four person with mask, but not really all the bus uses use it. Um, so no any rules. Also, like there is no, there were not rules uh, in supermarkets, for example, to keep distance, till the um, owner of the supermarket not decided to do that. So it was not like um, any rules really. It's mm. all on personal decisions. Yeah, only personal decisions. Decision, yeah. de decisions of uh, owners of the company, of people uh, that are working there, and that, that's it. 
Yeah, I said before on the beginning of our conversation that COVID wasn't, uh, wasn't the main subject in Belarus most mm -hmm. of these pandemic uh, times, but the Belarus was the main world topic during the, when the protests uh, begin. Mm -hmm. uh, how was that situation for your perspective, perspective and how is it uh, these, these days? Mm. So, uh, it's a quite difficult question because you never know how it, what, what facts came to, uh, together in one point and uh, something click and changed in society. But I think also this situation with uh, COVID influenced a lot because uh, people understood like, why we need government uh, that doesn't care about uh, society. Like, we, we understood we can, that we can care about themselves without government. We did everything just, just uh, communication between people and that's it. Line, like, how to say? There are a lot of things uh, get, uh, get in one point at the same time. Uh, also appeared people um, that uh, are quite smart and that decided that uh, they are strong enough uh, to take part in new elections because uh, in Belarus it, it could be, in my opinion, quite dangerous because of uh, um, repressions that we had during, uh, during the 26 years. They are not so visible because um, of information always hiding and not so many people really ready to, um, to risk of their health, of health their family and try to, to change, to do something. So this year, luckily, we uh, had such people that decided that they can try, they can um, take part. We, see, we saw the really dramatic uh, pictures from yeah. that protest. Uh, were you there? Was it that dangerous as, as we saw it? Yeah, I take part in uh, many uh, um, steps in election company. Uh, and uh, at that moment, I already understood that it's quite dangerous because, for example, I was an observer, if I can say it's like observer, on elections, so it's mean like you can make accreditation and um, come to observe how it's going and see maybe uh, not all rules are really following and um, you can count how many people enter the room, how many people voted and such things. That's a really interesting story for uh -huh. stopping, uh, stopping you there, but uh, we could compare the situation. You said that you were uh, on that uh, elections. Mm -hmm. Uh, how, how is it when you say that they are not following the rules? What are those mm -hmm. rules that they are not uh, following? There are uh, the same accusations here mm -hmm. uh, comparing to elections in, in Serbia. Mm -hmm. There is the usual situation that on elections, on such commissions, get only um, people that is uh, uh, members of some government associations or um, for example, teachers from the school that are always on such, taking part in such elections, like people not changing, it's the, the same commission mostly uh, every oh, election. Yeah, yeah. They understood, the government understood uh, that uh, a lot of people decided this year to take part because before mm, not so many people tried to do that. So uh, um, they finally, <laughs> remembered that we have COVID <laughs> and uh, that it is uh, not allowed to, to be a lot of people inside the room. Um, and um, that's why observers, independent okay. observers, couldn't get inside the room where there, um, there was voting. Uh, so um, there were a lot of cases when um, observers were just um, thrown away from the building I was more lucky, I was inside the building, but not in the room, in front of the room. And I could count uh, how many people enter the room and uh, compare with uh, final documents so that they should uh, uh, show any person according to the law. So to the end of the day, I could compare my numbers with, which, with numbers on the list. And, and what were the numbers, your uh, numbers and the official numbers? Yeah. <laughs> 
Was there any difference between uh, There was a big difference. According to the documents, sometimes it was in 10 times more. So it could be like, I don't remember numbers, but it could be like 40 That's people in my list. Yeah. yeah, and 400 in their list. You know how they say who counts wins the elections? Mm, was yeah. that the situation in, in yeah. Belarus? Yeah. yeah. So. At that moment, I understood that um, everything not clear, not honest. And uh, there were cases when um, they called to police that uh, observers, uh, I don't know, something do not right, and uh, these people got in prison for several days. And uh, there are many people in prison these yeah. days in Belarus. People yeah. like you, you were a graphic designer. I mm -hmm. don't know if we, we said that before. Yeah. You uh, know. A lot of people uh, in prison. Sometimes it's, um, they have a penalty and uh, allowed to go home. And, but quite often people stay in prison for 10 days, for 15 days. And we, at that moment, we have more than 100 people that already have um, crimes articles and uh, we we can name them as political uh, prisoners mm. how how would you say about uh, that situation uh, situation in belarus what uh, endangers you more is it covid or the government uh, for me of course the government uh, because even situation with covid uh, so politics Politica is everywhere, like uh, in such different situation, COVID, it's also politica. You, you can see that uh, government mm, don't, doesn't do much. So for me, government, yeah. Because even um, if you think deeply, all the problems, uh, even in hospitals, in um, that there is no quarantine on, on all levels, so even like, in schools, in university, uh, you can have some borders, but not in our country. Um, how do people of Belarus see this situation? Where, uh, where will it go? How will this end? Mm -hmm. Could you, could, uh, probably nobody knows at the moment, but what do you think? What do you expect to happen and how will that situation end? So I can say only about my opinion because people yes. are different and uh, some people mm, don't take part in any changes. For me, uh, like, uh, I, I would like that finally we could have uh, transparent new elections because uh, I feel uh, unfair everything, not fear everything that is around. And um, so for me, it's quite important that I can vote and I can choose. Uh, I would like my, my uh, voice uh, be respected and voice of other people be respected because it's our future. Uh, it's not uh, the country of group of people. This is uh, the country for every for whole society. So um, I hope Finally, we can have changes, positive changes in uh, our country. Uh, and uh, nobody knows how long it takes, but um, I can say that uh, people around me, like neighbors, my friends, they don't like the situation that we have in, uh, in Belarus. And if so many people don't like, I think uh, it's impossible to to stop the changes, maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's impossible to keep silence. Yeah, yeah, as we said at the beginning, probably you don't know many people here in Serbia. You knew no one here when you first came. Yeah. Uh, now I suppose that you meet people. Do they ask you about uh, that situation in Belarus and to co compare it with Serbia? Does mm -hmm. everybody, does uh, many people ask you that to compare? the situation in Belarus mm -hmm. to uh, the, your government to Serbian government? Yeah, I met people. Mm, I didn't speak, speak um, with a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, when, I, um, when they asked me about Belarus, the situation, because it's on TV on many countries, and I explained the situation, um, they, they see as I understood, they see uh, a lot of similar things 
here in Serbia. Uh, I don't think you have such level of violence that we have right now in, uh, in Belarus, but you also don't have such big uh, res resistance, resistance, resistance yeah. of society to, to regime. So I, I hope you will never get in uh, such situation that when uh, you will really need um, to fight for your human rights, but um, I hope government uh, of other countries uh, could learn something from the situation in Belarus and make uh, more democratic decisions. Uh, yeah, well, it's interesting that uh, you're coming here on a kind of a vacation in Serbia mm -hmm. and uh, people make you think about politics again because politics is a main topic yeah, in, yeah. in both of, the, both of uh, these countries. Yeah. Uh, how this uh, whole uh, situation affects on you personally, on your job, on mm -hmm. other people's jobs? Mm -hmm. So, um, people that is uh, working um, on... Uh, um, how we can say government companies yeah it's they have a really big pressure actually business also really have pressure if they try to to say their opinion to show their opinion they have press of uh, uh, fines they have pressure of um, like checking uh, many times of different if they have uh, any for example if you have a bar Okay. So suddenly, a lot of uh, checking organization. Oh, okay, like inspection. Yeah, inspection yeah. common, and trying to find you, uh, find something that is not right, and uh, quite often they just can create uh, that something, something is, is not right. right. Yeah, so that, it's a that big pressure. That sounds similar. Yeah. yeah. So can, I really uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Just can someone get a job in those government? Uh, organizations if he's not a member or a supporter of uh, of your leader or <laughs> <laughs> like if you keep silence of course but i think uh, uh, even now in the government companies there are a lot of people that don't like uh, our situation and don't like uh, our we, we could say leader <laughs> at that <Yeah>. moment <laughs> ex-leader <laughs> But they just keep silence because uh, they're afraid to lose job. Uh, a lot of people have uh, credits and uh, now it's mm, not only, sometimes it's even, we're talking not about losing job, but of getting in prison because of your opinion. So a lot of people just keep silence because what can they do? They don't want to, to get in prison. To, or to have problems with uh, health and uh, relatives, for example, mm -hmm. pressure from, on, from different sides. Well, Nastya, uh, I'm sorry for taking your vac vacation time. No, okay. <laughs> we had 15 minutes for this con conversation. We mm -hmm. uh, it took more time. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Uh, were, uh, you were our guest. Mm -hmm. I hope to see you again in Serbia, not because it's uh, maybe your only choice, <laughs> but, but because you want to, to come here. Mm -hmm. I hope you will have a nice, nice time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pratili ste emisiju 15 minuta. Hvala vam na pašnji.